Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. On the summit with me today is Coach Mike Famagletti, who is the flag football coach at Kansas Wesleyan University. It's a privilege, Coach, to get to visit with you today. The Coyotes were able to win the championship in the NAIA flag football finals, the silver bracket, earlier this month. And congratulations. That's the second time that you all have closed out your season with a win in the second year of the program's existence. So, uh, again, congratulations on the win. What a way to go out. Thank you. Yeah, it was definitely awesome. Um, you know, while it was the same finish as last year, I think our progression as a team was so much further. Um, you know, we almost doubled our win total from the previous year. Um, we swept every team in our conference who wasn't the national champion. And we really took those steps forward. And well, our program still gets to say we're undefeated in an NFL stadium. So that's pretty <laughs> legit bragging right there. I don't think there's too many other teams who get to say that. but. Honestly, it's been uh, a fun blast the two years, um, and we're only going to keep going up from here. It sounds like a great recruiting tool, too. I mean, you know, it's just one of those things, and the fact that they get to play in NFL stadiums as well. That, that in and of itself, I, I, I think is great. Well, Coach, uh, the, uh, the Coyotes able to come away in that final game with a 26-7 to victory over the University of St. Mary. And take us through that just for a little bit, uh, able to come away with that big victory when the lights were on. Right. So, I mean – Definitely, there was a lot of uh, things going around the game. You know, you're doing the pregame warm up, you're in a stadium of that caliber, of that size. They had us run through the tunnel where our names were announced over the speaker. And hey, we knew we've played this team four times and we've had some tight games in them, but we really believe, hey, there's a there's a big gap in between our programs and let's go prove it. You know, our, our big thing was, hey, shut them up. And, you know, they're the team that's talking, we're the team that's playing. You know, we're all we got, we're all we need in our family. And we came out there and, you know, we kind of came off bad. Uh, Brianna threw her first pick in over a month of play. I think we counted it was like eight straight games. She went without throwing an interception, which in a game where you pass 25, 30 times a game, that's pretty, you know, tough to do. Um, and she really grew. And then she bounced back right away. And for her, in her position, she plays offense and defense. So she's not like a normal quarterback goes and sits, reminisces, can look at it on the whiteboard or anything like that. No, she's right out there playing DB up against their all-conference receiver and you know she shut him down and then we come out that next drive we make some easy little passes we do some nice little things on the ground and right through the air go in and score a touchdown to jada wilson who's been one of our stallway two-way players for the last two years and have been an instrumental part in getting our program going being i believe the best defensive back or corner in the country in flight football um speaking even to men's coaches she her technique's amazing and you know, then we just kept rolling it on and, you know, it was a tight game for a little bit there and we had some big players step up. Maya Beasley is an Atlanta native and her game to play in the Falcon stadium and coming away with three sacks that day was huge. <laughs> um, Angel Roman, of course, lit it up. She had a bunch of catches, but I mean, she even rose up some big plays. Uh, Marissa Rubino made some big plays, offense, defense, Kendra, all of our defense, Alexa, Lexi at linebacker, um, all over. We had players stepping up and making plays. And that's what you want to see in an environment where, hey, it's our last game of the year. We want to go prove that, hey, this is the best team we've been all year. And I think we made a great argument for that by getting the mercy rule win for the third time that tournament. Coach, that, I, I agree with you entirely. When when players can really step it up in that final game and they they are able to take something in the next season, which you know your your team's going to be able to do. Such a young team, so many freshmen on that team. You were talking about Brianna Hernandez Silva, the, the quarterback for the team, one of only two juniors there. And, yeah. and in that championship game, three different receivers, three different freshman receivers, no less, uh, that she found for scores and was able to run one in herself as well. We're here on Midwest Sports Net, where we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And I encourage you, please consider subscribing to the channel as well. I, one other play you mentioned in, in passing to and, and Angel Roman, I, what a find not only to be able to, to get a player like that, but a two sport athlete as well. And, and uh, she, you know, saw time in all 32 of the women's basketball games this season, and then was able to, uh, you know, obviously put on a bit of a show for you had, had a pick six in the KCAC invitational, the, the semifinal that gets you into the championship game against Ottawa, not only the pick six, but it wound up being the game winning score. Right. And, you know, we feel, you know, we probably shouldn't have been in that situation, but Hey, it's great to have a player <laughs> who can step up and, you know, She's a young player, but she's starting to get more of that killer instinct. Hey, it's up to me to make those plays, um, you know. But 
I think the more she just keeps playing the system, the more the plays happen. And she's an incredibly talented athlete. We found her out of Florida and we really loved her for the flag recruiting, but she's also like a coach. I love basketball. She's a heck of a basketball player, obviously getting time as a freshman in a tough basketball league and for a tough team. And we showed her tight tape to coach showman. He's just like, yeah, she's, she's good. She can play. And then she ended up doing both. And that's a lot on you as a freshman, you know, you're adjusting yeah. to college, you're adjusting to being away from home. You're learning two different team styles, two different sports that are, you know, you've played your whole life, but they're just a little different, a little faster at the college level. And yeah, she's really stepped up and made some huge plays. And she's one of those players. Honestly, as the season kept moving forward, she kept being a more reliable target. She kept being a better player. The more she played and the more we got in her with a rhythm and relationship with everyone on the team. Coach, you, you have so many freshmen on this team, and, and I, I know that's a big deal. You're growing a program really from scratch, and, and you have been for the last two years, but uh, a big influx of freshmen coming in. Uh, will you continue to be able to recruit like that, or is it, is it going to be a big class next year, or, or uh, how do you see that going? Because as this sport is an emerging sport with the NAIA, it's going to be something in, in which other programs are going to be coming along, and rightfully so, and that's the way it should be. Other schools should be getting flag football and, and more are going to be coming in. How do you see recruiting? Well, I see recruiting as it's not just growing at the college level, it's growing at the high school level. Every year there's a new state or new major area that's adding flag football. I mean, it's just breaking into the Frisco, Dallas Frisco area. Like Frisco just had its uh, first championship and they had like 12 teams, but we know there's a million people in Frisco, Texas, so, you know, or, um, you know, Fort Worth, Texas, sorry, Fort Worth, Texas, there's a million people in that area. So once they really start joining every high school, that'd be huge. Um, it's already spread to Georgia and having the Falcons and having the NFL behind it's only going to spread it to every one of those markets. It really just is where it grows there. But I think that's going to enable the sport to keep growing. But yeah, this year we're looking at having another, you know, larger freshman class just because of, you know, it's a young sport. It's a growing sport. Uh, people are still learning about the opportunity that, hey, this is a college option for me. You know, Kansas Wesleyan is a great program and great place for them to go and to be. And we are a program that's, you know, on the rise. We've been winning. And now we feel, hey, let's keep taking those steps forward. Let's go for the best players in the country. Let's go find the right fit, you know, off the field. So that way we can keep taking those steps forward as a program. So we don't have to automatically play someone as a freshman. We can develop but We can make them better so that way when they do step on the field they're the best player they've ever been not constantly being thrown into the fire you know and mm -hmm. us having a a great freshman returning class from last year really sets a lot of the pieces in place for our next people to be successful and our returners to be successful and we tell our players hey we'll never prioritize recruiting over you but anybody we recruit will make your experience in our team better you're going to have a better player next to you or competing against you every day in practice so Coach, and, and yeah, to 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 follow up on that too, and and I I really like that not not prioritizing over, but just to add to, and I think that's a, a fantastic way, you know, to keep uh, to to build up the the student athletes and and you know uh, teenagers, early twenties, to to be able to to know that you have their back as well. Well, well, Coach, that there are so many players as you mentioned already then coming in and and uh, that that were a, a big part of this season and excelled as the season went on heading into year three then how, how do you see the team progressing and uh are they where you thought they might be right now or or uh you know how, how much room is there to grow what is there a ceiling even right and there's a there's a, a big ceiling but i think we want to crash through whatever it is you know for us we want to be right up there competing for it all i mean we see that a team in kansas has won the both of them uh both the national titles um as they are now and you know um, the game's technically centered around Florida and the Southeast, but that just proves, hey, those great players from the Vegas area where a lot of our team's from. We get some talented ball players out of Florida like Angel, like Jada, like um, Alexis Jimenez, you know, a lot of players out of there. Um, but then we kind of find, hey, our location allows us to get the best from all over because we're centrally located. Um, and as the game keeps growing, you know, and keeps having that NFL support, there's going to be more college teams that pop up, and that will – really keep boosting it. I think it's an awesome sport to add because everybody loves football. It has the same energy that you see in a football game, just condensed down to an hour and a half and you get to see everyone's face, you know, <laughs> and you get to, right. You get to see the emotions. You get to see when this person's being an intense, you get to hear when they're, you know, excited. Like for us, it's awesome that I also work with the men's team that 
hey, our guys can come out and scrimmage against us. And that provides a huge challenge for us. You know, it makes us better. They're facing, you know, receivers who are bigger, taller, faster, or quarterbacks who are bigger, taller, faster, and can throw it farther than anyone they'll play. So they got to cover more ground. They got to be better with their technique, see how some people do it, you know. And just the way the sport's going to keep growing, in our league, we're adding two teams next year. You know, who knows how many we'll add throughout, you know, the next four to five years. You know, I think there'll be 40, 50, 60 teams in another five years that are playing this game at the college level. Well, that that will be fun to watch. And I like that. What a what a great detail. You get to see the emotion there as well. I that that is a, a fantastic addition to it. Well, Coach, let, let me ask you this as as uh, we, we wrap up our time with uh, Coach Pham. Uh, and I, I am, I'm grateful for your time, grateful that you've stopped by here on the summit and, and visited today. You mentioned the, the men's football team too, and, and Kansas Wesleyan has a fantastic men's football team playing in the NAI championship tournament in three of the last four years, including this past season. And, and you are uh, an assistant coach on that team as well. Is, is there an off season? When, when do you get to sleep or, or do you? <laughs> This spring, it was, it was great that, hey, we got a new coach, Coach Meyer, Matt Myers, and, you know, he said, hey, this year, you know, go focus more on that, that than you do, and, you know, they were able to, they worked some things around staff-wise, and, you know, I'm not going to be as much with them, but still a big fan of what they do. I know a lot of the guys on the team recruited a lot of them, you know, been there for them in a lot of moments, but, I mean, yeah, over the last two years, it's been crazy. Uh, the first season of our program, we did a split season, so we had games in the fall when we were trying to establish a program. And then last spring, uh, we had men's football games going on at the same time as women's games. So I would be on a Friday, I'd go drive across Kansas or to Nebraska. And then I'd, you know, that running around, but you know, it all worked out for the best and perfectly. And I'm glad the other coaches in our league helped me help me with that too, with the schedule, knowing our football schedule and everything. And yeah, it's been a whirlwind, but I think both of the teams and both the programs working together helps them both grow forward. It helps the guys see like, Hey, these women are football players. They're athletes. They want the exact same thing we do. You know, Oh, the technique carries over like, Hey, I can watch film with this girl and help them, you know, understand this young lady. And it, it really helps push everything forward and not just as players, but as people, you know, helping our guys see, Hey, these young women as athletes and people that, Hey, they want the same thing. We're going to push each other. And the young athletes will be fans for each other. You know, we'll have, probably like 500 people at some of our uh, women's flag games, which is, you know, giving us a great crowd and great environment for every time we play. Well, coach, I, I, that those are great words. And I appreciate that, especially to hear about an athletic department that is, is growing together and, and there's a synergy uh, amongst different portions of the, the department as well. Coach Mike Famigletti, the head flag football coach, assistant uh, football coach as well for the Kansas Wesley and coyotes coach. Thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit success to you all and to the flag football team as it continues to grow. Thank you very much, Joey. I appreciate your time and it's going to keep growing. I um, have a great class coming this year and we're just going to now take our young people and have them mature up. So that's the race to maturity now. And let's figure out how quickly we can hit that. Wow.